Hey, thanks for clicking the video. Some people were asking for a swing update, kind of what I'm working on. And also some people were asking why I look uh, across the line at the top. So uh, when you guys have seen in these recent videos that I've done both with uh, uh, the ones that I did a while ago with Tony, the ones I did with Lee Dietrich, the ones I did with Mike Malaska, all, a lot of these different instructors are telling me to throw a ball and I was comparing, uh, I went to my swing, uh, the 3D motion an analyzation place, and those videos are coming out too. My computer's broke, so they're, they're locked on that computer until that gets fixed. But uh, I did a 3D uh, motion capture of myself doing that ball throwing drill. And then I compared that to my golf swing. And when I'm throwing a ball, everything happens that I want to happen. To, uh, there's a little bit of a shift and then, uh, and then the arms accelerate like at the perfect time, everything I want to happen. But when I have the golf club in my hand, it's very twisty and spinny from the top. So uh, I was talking to Tony about reactionary golf and a lot of the things that we've been working on and getting more uh, athletic and more uh, using the right arm to really smash the golf ball. And I was asking him, hey, how can I, how can I get the look that I have in throwing a ball more into my golf swing because I think that's an important piece to it. Tony will talk a little bit about the process of how we did that. I'll see you guys after that. Hey Brandon, Tony inside the golf lab. Been doing a great job working on your swing, making those adjustments. We finally got that backswing exactly where I'd like to see it a touch cross the line. So Looking at what that means is when we get lined up parallel to our target line at the top of the backswing, we got this shaft pointed a little bit to the right. Now, the reason why we've done that, I've recommended that, is to get rid of this laid off motion. Now, let's talk about where this laid off motion came from. Well, your old tendency is once we got to the top here is to kind of spin out, squat, and lay down. And that shaft lays down, and then now we get this wobbling here. So the problem is, is trying to get to the ball from here. So unfortunately, you've trained your body, your lower body, to work in a different manner than what we see traditionally. Generally, when the body and the hips outrun the arms and the club, we see it maybe being a slide. Well, in your case, it is a spin out. So we actually have to implement a slide into your transition in order to fix that motor pattern. Now, one way I want you to do this is set up a line at about a 25 degree angle relative to your target line closed. Now, what this does is kind of give you an idea to represent the transition of our weight and pressure in from this right heel up towards this left big toe. So the idea is, if we look this on a pressure plate, we would see the center of mass moving in that direction in transition. In your case right now, we're seeing too much of this. So in order to fix that fall, we're actually gonna make the slide, we have to relearn a new motor pattern, and that movement is gonna be a combination of those arms and hips sliding up towards that big toe. So. Once we get up to the top, doing a great job of touch cross line, arm and hips now work in this diagonal, this 25 degree angle. Now we're approaching that club from the inside and we get rid of this laying off of the shaft. So it's a combo move. This isn't a particular move that everyone needs to try to do because it depends on what your tendencies are. In your case, Brendan, we got the spin out, we got to do something. So from a motor perspective, I like to go to the opposite end of the spectrum and have you feel it's more of a shift into this left leg, left big toe, to make sure we keep that center of mass moving in the right direction. And then as those arms and body continue to go, we finish it up. So this little drill from here, just feel like his arms are swinging, working into that strong leg, and then on and through. So, golfers, if you have a tendency to spin out, this is a good drill and good setup to change your transition and improve your path on the way down. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys. 
Huge thanks to Tony for doing that video. If you guys have any questions at all about for me or for Tony or anything, just put them in the comments below. The thing that I think is really interesting is that a lot of people, uh, when I talk to people about what they're working on or other things, a lot of people say that, oh, I, I don't move my hips enough. My, my hips aren't clearing. My hips are totally frozen and locked up. Um, but when you watch their swings, it's not so much how much their hips move, but really when their hips move. They're just moving so much so early in the transition, and that's one of the things that uh, we're working on. I'm trying to save some hip in transition so that I can use it through the shot is uh, kind of the idea. And the main thing I think that's gonna make a huge difference in my game, and that has helped me recently a lot, is getting rid of kind of that wobble at the top, that that laid off, where the arm goes out, the club goes, goes more laid off. And that wobble can be a little different every time. So that's just uh, the antithesis of consistency when you're like, okay, is it gonna be like this? Or is it gonna be like, you know? If you watch the change in direction of uh, Justin Thomas, I think he's doing it probably the best right now. And the change in direction in like a 2000 Tiger Woods, I would say that that's the best it's been done. Oh, I just thought of something else. The other thing I want to tell you guys too is when you see these videos of me doing the drill, I don't put it at 25 degrees. I put it a lot closer to like 40 degrees just because of how extreme I need to feel from the inside. So uh, you'll see the stick is not really at 25 for me. It's, it's at like 45. But ideally, I want to get to where I'm just feeling it at about 25 degrees. And the other thing about being across the line is that may not be a forever solution for me. Right now that's helping eliminate some of the, the speed wobbles I call it because the, the harder I try to hit it the more it wobbles up at the top. But eventually I'd like to, uh, to get that where I'm not really transitioning in that way and I can uh, I get a lot more down the line more traditional looking up at the top not so across the line. Tony and I are going to do a long form discussion over Skype about this transition move and also about a lot of the stuff about the reactionary golf swing. And I'm gonna put that up on the Building Your Reactionary Golf Swing page. So if you have it already, you'll see that go up there in a few days. And if you don't have it, send me an email and I'll give you a discount code in order to get Building Your Reactionary Golf Swing. This uh, that really shows you a step-by-step -step guide to getting into this golf swing method that I've employed. All right, thanks for watching everybody. Click subscribe, it really helps, and see you later.